Hello everyone and welcome to this three-part Blender tutorial series where we will be creating this magic mushroom scene in Blender EV. So this is going to be a three-part tutorial series. So in this part, in part one, we are going to be modeling some basic mushrooms and then we are going to be texture painting the mushrooms and then we will be finishing up the materials for the mushrooms. Then in part two, we're going to be setting up all of the rest of the scene. So we're going to be using geometry nodes to place the objects on the ground and we'll be creating a basic ground object and then we'll also be doing the lighting and adding in some mist and things like that. So by the end of part two you will have a finished rendered image and then in part three we're going to be doing the animation so we're going to be creating those little glowing orbs or embers and kind of animate them moving around and we're going to be animating the camera and animating a few other things and then rendering that into frames and then compiling that together in Blender's video editor to get the finished final animation. Now this entire tutorial series is going to be completely free on my YouTube channel, but I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living, so if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then some great places to support me are on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. So on my Gumroad store and Patreon page you get 3D models and assets, you also get all of my procedural materials and different artwork project files and the tutorial files like this one here. And another great way to help support me and this channel is by checking out the YouTube memberships right down there if you click on that join button down there next to the subscribe button. So your support is very much appreciated so I can continue to make free content and tutorials. Now I am going to be using a drawing tablet for the texture painting so if you're able to use a drawing tablet then that would be very helpful because texture painting with a drawing tablet is much easier than texture painting with a mouse and your posture is also a lot better and your also able to use pen pressure. Now if you're not able to use a drawing tablet you can use a mouse but I think you will get a better result if you use a drawing tablet. Now I am going to be using my display drawing tablet so it's a tablet where I can actually draw on the screen but you definitely don't need something that fancy. You could just use one of those smaller pad tablets and those are a lot less expensive but they are way better than using a mouse. And if you're interested in purchasing a drawing tablet I will have Amazon links in the description to some tablets that I recommend and those are Amazon affiliate links so if you purchase something through those links that'll help me out but with no extra cost to you. Now to help us get some nice realistic lighting and reflections I'm going to be using this Canon HDRI and this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com so the link is in the description if you'd like to download it and I'll be downloading the 1k HDR version and then I'll just download this. And then I also want the finished scene to feel like it's in a forest so I'm going to be downloading this free image image here and this is a free image from pixabay.com. Again link is in the description if you'd like to download this and we are going to be putting this image in the background and it'll be pretty blurred and in the background so you won't be able to see it that clearly but it'll just help to give the atmosphere of a forest. So again links in the description if you'd like to download this free image from pixabay and I'm going to be downloading the highest resolution. All right, so here we are in a new scene in Blender. Now, as we're doing the tutorial, my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I first wanna just delete everything. So I'm going to hit the A key a few times to select everything, and then I will press X and I'm gonna click on delete. Always make sure you delete the default cube. So I always like to save the Blender file right at the beginning so that if Blender crashes we won't lose anything. So let's click right here on File and then I'm going to click on Save As. And I'll just save this in a folder on my computer as MagicalMushrooms.Blend and I will click on Save As. Alright, so as we're working on the project you can just press Control S and that will save the Blender file. So I'm going to start by modeling the mushrooms. So let's press Shift A and I'm gonna go here to mesh and I'm gonna go right down here and add a circle. Now right above me, you can see there's that add circle setting there. Let's just click on that to open it up. And I wanna turn the vertices down because right now they're pretty high at 32. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm just gonna type in like 12. I'll hit enter and then I can just minus the add circle settings. And that way if I zoom in now, you can see that is much lower resolution, but it'll be fine for our mushrooms. So now let's press the tab key and the tab key is going to take us into edit mode and then I want to fill a face right here so I'm going to press the F key and that is going to fill a face. Then I'm going to press one on my numpad and that is going to take me to front view. So I'm going to start by modeling the mushroom top. 
So I'm going to press the E key and the E key is going to extrude up the faces that are selected. And I'm just gonna bring this up like that. And then I'm going to press S to scale and we are going to scale this up and make it a bit bigger. Let's also press G to grab and then bring this down on the Z axis a bit. All right, click to place that there. I'm now going to press E to extrude again and let's extrude this up even more. And then I'll press S to scale and we'll scale that down a little bit. And then E to extrude, we'll just extrude that up click to place it and then S to scale, we can scale this down, E to extrude again, bring this up and then S to scale and we'll scale that down. We're just gonna continue to do that for the mushroom, E to extrude, place it there, S to scale and make that much smaller. And then I'm also going to hold down the Alt key and then just select these loops and I can press S to scale and just kind of adjust that if I need to. I think I'll make that a little bit smaller and then hold down the Alt key and select that loop and I can scale that down a little bit as well. And I'm actually going to tap the A key a few times to select everything, and I can press S to scale, and then I'm going to scale this on the Z axis and just make it a little bit smaller so it's not quite as high up and down. And I can also press G and Z, and we're gonna bring this down on the Z axis. All right, and that is looking really good. I do want the bottom of the mushroom to kind of come up a little bit. So you can press the three on the top of your keyboard, or you can also click right here, and that's gonna go to the face select. Then I can just select this face, and I'm going to press the I key and the I key is going to inset a face in that face. Bring that down, then I can press G to grab. I wanna hit Z to bring this up on the Z axis and let's just bring that up. And then again, I'll press I and I will inset that. Click to place that there. Then I can press G to grab and then hit Z and bring it up on the Z axis. So right here, this is looking a little bit sharp. So I'm gonna click right back over here to go to the vertex select. You can also press the one on the top of your keyboard. Then I can hold down the Alt key and just select that loop of vertices. And then I want to make this less sharp. So I'm going to press Control B. So Control B is going to add a bevel and then I'm gonna bring my mouse out and then just kind of place it right there. So now you can see that is less sharp. If I just tab back into object mode, you can see how that's looking. Let's press Control S again to save the file. All right, so now I want to add a subdivision surface modifier to make this nice and smooth because you can see it's very blocky. To add a subdivision surface modifier, you can press Control 2 and I'm hitting the Control 2, the 2 on the top of my keyboard. Or you can also click right here on the modifier properties and you can click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface. And then on the viewport and render here on the subdivision surface, I'm going to turn these both to two. And then I want to shade this object smooth so that you can't see all the little squares there. So using the object context menu, you can just click on shade smooth. So I use the right click select. So I just hit the W key and then click on shade smooth, but you can just right click and then click on shade smooth. And that is it for the top of the mushroom. Pretty easy to model. So in object mode, I'm going to press G to grab and just bring this up on the Z axis and bring it up there. All right. So now what I want to do is create the mushroom stem. So I'm going to press shift a let's go to mesh and we are also going to be adding another circle so press shift a go to mesh and we're going to add a circle and then i'm going to leave the vertices set to 12 that's how it was before because we set it to 12 so it's now just set to 12. I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and then I will press S to scale and we're going to scale this down. And then I can press the one on the numpad to go to front view. So I want to extrude this up and I want to kind of wiggle a little bit. So it's gonna kind of go this way and then it's gonna go back this way. And then as it goes up, it's gonna also get a little bit smaller. So I'm going to press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude this out. I'm gonna bring it over here. I can press S to scale, scale it down a little bit and also press R to rotate and rotate it a little bit. And then I can press E to extrude again. Let's press S to scale and R to rotate and just kind of stick it up there. E to extrude. Let's bring it over this way, scale it down a little bit. And I need to double tap the A key to select everything. And I'm going to scale it all down and bring it down a little bit because it's a little bit too big. All right, hold down the Alt key and just select that loop of vertices. I can press E to extrude. S to scale, G to grab, and R to rotate. All right, E to extrude again, S to scale. We're gonna rotate that over. 
E to extrude again. Let's hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe view. That way I can see it in the wireframe and I'll scale it down and kind of bring it over a little bit. And then if you want to, you can just kind of play around with this a little bit. So I want to press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select and I'm just going to drag a box around those vertices and I'll press G to grab and R to rotate. Just kind of rotate them around, um, hold down the Z button, go back into solid view. And if you want to, you can kind of make it uh, rotate around this way a little bit. So I think I will do that. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go back to wireframe. I'll press A to deselect everything. And then I'll press B for the box select. Just box select some of these and I can press R to rotate and G to grab. Just kind of rotate that a little bit and then box select another area just kind of rotate that and i think i will rotate this back a little bit so i'm basically just making a slight little curve there just to make it a bit more organic and natural that's pretty good i'll go back to object mode by pressing the tab key so then i want to give this a subdivision surface modifier because you can see it is very blocky so again the shortcut key is control 2 so control 2 is going to add a subdivision surface modifier and then using the object context menu i can just shade this smooth now i do want to fill in the bottom and the top i think it would just be nice to fill in the bottom and the top so i'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode i can hold down the alt key and select this loop of vertices and then i want to press e to extrude and then right after that i'll press s to scale and i'll scale it down just a little then i can press the f key and that is going to fill a face there and then i want to make it a little bit sharper here because you can see it's a little bit round so i'm going to press Control r to add a loop cut i can left click drag down and then left click again to place it there. So let's do the same thing for the top. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go back into object mode. I can then select this right here, the top of the mushroom and I can press the H key and that is going to hide it. And then I can select this object. Let's press the tab key again to go into edit mode. I'm gonna zoom in and then I can hold down the alt key and select this loop of vertices. And then I can press E to extrude and then S to scale. Just kind of scale this down and then I can press the F key to fill a face there. And then again, this is a little bit round, so I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut and then left click, drag up and then left click again, just so that that's a bit sharper. And then I do believe we need to recalculate the normals. It appears as though the shading is just a little bit weird. So I think the mesh is actually flipped inside out. So to recalculate the normals, I'm gonna double tap the A key to select everything. And then I can press Shift N. So Shift N is gonna recalculate the normals and that is looking correct. I can press the tab key to go back into object mode. And then I can press Alt H and Alt H is going to unhide everything. And then I can just select the top of the mushroom and I'll press G to grab and I'm going to stick this right down there so it's right inside there and that way the stem is going to go into the top of the mushroom. All right let's press Control S to save so we are finished with the mushroom modeling. All right so now that the modeling is finished we are going to set up these models for texture painting. So to set them up for texture painting we need to add a new material to them and add an image texture that we can paint on and then we also need to UV and wrap the mesh. So I'm just going to select the mushroom top and then I'm going to click right over here to the UV editor and then I'm going to zoom in. So press the A key to make sure everything is selected and then I will press the U button and that is going to bring up the UV map settings and I'm going to go right down here and click on the smart UV project. Now on this island margin right here, I do want a little bit of space between the UV islands. So I'm going to turn this to like a 0.02 just a 0 0.02 and then I'll click on OK. And you can see it UV unwraps it really nicely, but it just gives a little bit of space in between each of those UV islands so that there's not any overlapping. So let's do the same thing for this object as well. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go back to object mode. Let's select this object. I'm going to tab to go into edit mode and then just double tap the A key to make sure everything is selected. And then again, press the U button and that is gonna bring up the UV map settings. I'm gonna click on smart UV project, make sure the island margin is set to a 0 0.02 and then click on OK. And you can see it's done a pretty nice UV unwrap. So this is fine for what we're doing for the texture painting. So now what I want to do is go over to the shading tab and then I'm going to select the top of the mushroom. So I'm now going to click on new here to add a new material in the shader editor and I'm going to rename this material to mushroom top. 
So now we need to create an image that we can actually texture paint on. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to go to the search here, and I'm going to search for an image texture. Let's drop the image texture right down here. And then I want to take the color, and I want to plug that up into the base color. Now I want to create a new image that we can paint on it. So let's click on the New button right here. Now I am going to be painting with a 4K image. I want to have a pretty nice high quality image. So I'm going to paint on a 4K image. So I'm going to click drag down and then let go and that'll change both of the values at the same time and I'm going to type in 4096 and then hit enter that is very standard for a 4k texture and then on the name here I can just call this mushroom top color mushroom top color or just mushroom top and then I'm going to just leave the color at black because we're actually going to be adding a gradient to the mushroom so I can just leave that to black and then I will click on OK. All right, so there's the mushroom top color. So we've now set that up. So with this object selected, I can now go over here to the texture painting workspace. And I'm going to zoom in here. Now, right over here, this is like the flat view of the texture. And I don't want to paint on the flat view. I want to paint on the actual 3D mesh. So I'm going to click and drag and make this much smaller so that we can't really see it that well because I don't really want to paint on this. I want to have lots of space to paint on the actual mesh. So I'm now going to bring this over to my drawing tablet and we'll get started with the texture painting. All right, so here I am at my drawing tablet. Now, if you've never done texture painting before and you'd like to learn how, then I will have some links in the description to some beginner tutorials on texture painting in Blender that I've created. So I'm going to start by adding a color gradient onto the mushroom and then we'll paint over the gradient. So to create the gradient, I'm going to click right here and this is going to go to the fill tool. So I'm now going to go right Right down here over here on the side and right down here on the color you can see we can choose between a color or a gradient so I'm going to change this to gradient now we can change the colors here so I'm going to click on this black one and I'm going to make this kind of like a dark blue so a very saturated dark blue that's going to be the first color and then I'm going to click right over here on the white tab and I'm going to change this white tab to a very light blue kind of like a teal color and if you'd like to use the exact same colors that I'm using then for the teal color you can go over to the hex value and you can put in a hex value of 00, 0 FFF6. So that is the teal color that I'll be using. And then right over here on this dark blue, if you go to the hex value, I'll be using a hex value of 00. 0 105B. So those are the colors that I'm going to use for the gradient. So I'm now going to navigate to the side of the mushroom. And then what you can do is you can press down on the drawing tablet and move your mouse up or bring your pen up. And that is going to create a line right there. And then when you let go, that is going to make the gradient. So wherever you start the line, that's where the gradient is going to start. And then the gradient is going to end wherever the line ends. All right. So I think something like that is pretty good. So as you can see, it's blue down here, but then kind of up here it is very light blue but then it's dark blue down here so that is what I was going for something like that so I'm now just going to click right back over here to the draw brush and we can paint more details and then you can choose the color right here you can also choose the color right up here and I'm going to make sure the color of the draw brush is fully white and I'm now going to move up to the top here and then I will press the F key and that's going to make my brush bigger and then I want to turn the strength way down so I'm going to take the strength value right here and I'm going to turn that way down. Now you can see that there's quite a bit of a change in the matte cap because of the matte cap that we have. There's like some bright parts there and when you move it around there's kind of a little bright area right there and so I want to be able to see this a little bit better so I'm going to change the matte cap. So to change the matte cap I'm going to click on this arrow right here and you can choose a matte cap or flat. I'm going to use the studio and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to change it to this one right here so this should be a built into blender so you should have it. This is just a very white one and so there's not going to be a bunch of change in the color you can see it looks pretty much the same all around. All right, so now that I have this and now that the strength is turned down, I think I'll just turn the strength down to like a 0.2 or something like that. I'm just going to start to tap and kind of drag around with my pen and I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter right here on the very top. So right here on the very top of the mushroom, I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter, but it is going to be pretty subtle. So I'm just kind of going around here in circles and I'm not pressing too hard and I'm just going to make that a little bit brighter. All right, and just something like that, I don't want to overdo it too too much um, but something like that is pretty good. I do think I'm going to click on the white color right here and I'm going to make this a very bright color not super saturated maybe even kind of like a bright bluish greenish just some kind of color like that and then I'm going to go along this 
and just kind of get away a little bit of the white and just make it a little bit of a lighter blue. Something like that if you want to, you could do that. So I'm just gonna go along there. That looks a little bit better. All right, so I now wanna paint some little blobs. So what I'm gonna do is press the F key to make my brush a lot smaller. And then on the strength value right here, I'm gonna turn that all the way back up to one so it's very strong. And then I'm gonna click right here on the color. And for this one, I'm gonna make it very, very blue, but then I'm also gonna make it very, very dark. So it's gonna be a very dark blue color and then press the F key to make your brush smaller. So I'm now just gonna go along here and I'm just gonna paint some little blobs. And I want them to be pretty random and just kind of all over the place, just a few little blobs here and there, just kind of painting that texture. So I'm just gonna to go to random parts of the top of the mushroom and just paint some random little blobs there. Just kind of put some blobs around and just kind of make them randomly be different shapes. Um, and I do want them to be kind of randomly placed around, but also um, somewhat evenly placed around as well, but a little bit random. They don't need to be any specific shape. I'm just kind of making like a round blob. And some of them are going to be a little bit bigger and some of them are going to be a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go along there and continue to do this. And let's press Control S to save the Blender file. Just make sure to save the Blender file every now and then. All right, zoom in here and we'll paint another little one there. I don't want to overdo it because you could add too many if you just keep on adding more and more um, but I do want to add some more so I'm kind of zooming out here seeing how that is just finding some spots where it could use some more of these all right let's take a look at that I don't want to add too many um, but we could add just a few more like maybe one right here kind of zoom in there just make a little blob there and I think I'll just do maybe one more or two more uh, let's do another one here all right, but I don't want to do overdo it, so just something like that is pretty good. Let's press Control S again to save the project. All right, now I want to add some darker areas. So I'm going to click on this blue color and just make it a little bit darker. So it's very, very dark, but it is a little bit blue. Then I'm going to press the F key to make my brush bigger. And then on the strength right here, I'm also going to turn the strength way down. So I'm going to make the strength really, really small, just like a 0.1 or a 0.2. And I'll make my brush bigger. And now I'm just going to kind of go along here and I'm just going to make some little kind of blocks going around here and this is going to be blue but it's a little bit darker and I'm just giving a little bit of randomness here and there um, but it is very subtle but it'll just add a little bit of noise and just make it look a little bit more organic and natural so I'm just adding some dark colors right there and if you didn't want it to be that dark you could also hold down the s key and the s key is going to go to the eyedropper and you could just go back to that blue color go back to that blue color that was down here and then you could just kind of go along that might be a little bit better, or you could use a slightly darker color. So I'm just going along there, just making it a bit random and just adding some noise there. So I'm just kind of going around and tapping with my pen. And then I'm gonna click on this blue. Let's make it even darker again, like a really dark color. And I'm just gonna go along here and kind of on the edge of the mushroom, I'm gonna make this even darker. So it is gonna be subtle, but there, it's just gonna be a little bit darker right here on the very edge. So I'm just going along there, making it just a little bit darker. Something like that is pretty good. It is a little bit hard to see. I could turn the strength up just a little bit so I can see a little bit better. I could even click right here to change this and I could just change it to like flat. And if I change it to flat, now you're just able to see the texture painting so it's not going to show any of the shading so it is a little bit harder to see the shape of the mesh but you're able to see the texture paint a little bit better I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna go back to the studio and just use this flat studio one right there all right so next I want to paint like some lighter blue right down here kind of inside the mushroom and so I want to get rid of the stem so I'm gonna hop back over here to the layout and then I'm going to select the stem and then I'm going to press the H key and that's going to hide that object so I can now just select the top of the mushroom again and then let's go back here to the texture painting tab and I'm going to navigate down here so I'm going to turn the strength all the way up to one and then I'm going to navigate actually right up here and I want to use kind of a bright blue teal color so I'm going to press the S key and just move my mouse somewhere around here and then let go of the S key and that's going to select that color so just something like that just a color like that I'll press the F key to make my brush quite a bit bigger and then I'm just going to go around in circles and we're just going to make that really bright so we're just going to make this bright blue color underneath the mushroom and just make that a really bright color and it's going to be a little bit more subtle kind of on the outside here so on the outside I'm pressing less hard with my pen and because I'm using a drawing tablet and I have pen pressure if I press less hard that is going to make the strength not as strong and that is also because this button is turned on right there so the pen pressure is going to control the strength value all right something like that pretty good and I 
I do like it if it's a little bit lumpy here and there just to make it a little bit more organic and natural, kind of give it that hand painted look. And then also I'm going to click right here on the color and I'm going to make a little bit of a deeper blue and then I'm going to press the F key and make my brush a little bit smaller and I can also like turn the strength down just a little bit and then I can go along here and I'm just going to make kind of a deeper blue color right here along the edge kind of along the bottom. So I'm just going to go along here in a circle and just make kind of a subtle blue color something like that and then i can again go right back over here and make this like a really bright color kind of white and then i'm going to go along here in the center and maybe make this even a little bit brighter so something like that now i want to make that darker blue color a little bit stronger so let's click right back here and i'm going to make this a darker blue a pretty strong saturated blue and i'm going to press the f key to make my brush bigger and then i'm going to go along here and let's actually turn the strength down a little bit and i'm going to go along here and make that blue a bit stronger because I do want a little bit more of that blue color. All right, so that is a bit better because we're also gonna be painting like a texture of some like stripes which are coming out. So I do need a little bit of a darker color. So I'm now going to press the S key and I'm gonna select that really bright blue color. And then I'm going to press the F key the F key will make my brush smaller. And then right back here on the color, I'm gonna make sure this is fully white and I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. All right, so then turn the strength all the way up and I'm gonna start from the middle and I'm gonna just go out here and make some lines. So the lines are gonna kinda of come out there and then go over here and make sure you're looking at this from the bottom view. And I'm gonna add some lines there, kinda of going across. And then let's go the opposite way. So I'm gonna go along here and using a drawing tablet for this is especially helpful because it's much easier, like the posture is better. Whereas with a mouse, you're just kind of moving around and clicking on places on the screen. So especially for when you're painting things like this, it can be very helpful if you're using a drawing tablet. So now I'm gonna go along here and put more lines in between those lines. So I'm just going along here, adding more lines there, and then going back and forth here. So it's sort of like if we're cutting pieces out of a pie, we're going around and making even cuts there. All right, just like that. And then within each of these, I'm going to add two more lines. So I'll press the F key, make my brush a little bit bigger and I'll zoom in there. And then I'm gonna go along here and within each of those little pie cuts, I'm gonna add two more lines. All right, so just go along there and you could even make these lines a little bit thicker if you wanted to. And then let's navigate over here to the side and then let's add some more. So I'm gonna keep on painting and keep on painting there just adding in some lines there and you can make them a bit thicker if you want to all right let's see how that's looking that's pretty cool let's navigate back here and do another one so two more lines right in there all right that's pretty good let's go to the next one add two more lines there in the center all right to the next one and just fill that in there. All right, and we have a couple more left. I'm just gonna finish this up. And you could even make them like wobble a little bit, just kind of give them like a little bit of a wobble to make it look a little bit more organic and natural, um, just so that they're not super straight and make another one there and another one there. And we are just about done. All right, so if there are any bigger spots, you could just like add another one in between them if you wanted to, to make it look a little bit more even. Um, something like that is pretty good. Let's also press the F key to make our brush size bigger. And then right in the center here, I can just kind of go along here and I can make it that bright blue color. So just go along there and make it pretty bright in the center. So just something like that. All right, so I now want to add a bunch of little dots on the mushroom. So I'm gonna actually be setting up the brush so that we can just draw over it and it's gonna place a bunch of dots randomly around. So what I'm gonna do is press the F key to make my brush smaller. And then I'm gonna click right here on the color and I'm gonna make this a very strong blue color but then make it very, very, very dark. So something like that. And then I'm going to click and drag with my front pen button. And I'm just going to move this over here. And I'm going to click right here on the stroke. And you can see on the stroke settings, there is a spacing right here. So normally it's just set to 10. And so you're not actually able to see any of the dots because all the dots connect together. But I can click on this and I can change the spacing value. So I'm going to type in 1000. So I'm going to have a spacing value of 1000. And then also right here, there is a jitter amount. Um, let me first just show you what this is doing. So now that I've set this to a thousand, you can see that I can bring my pen back and forth and you can see that it's going to bring a big gap in between both of those dots. So I'll just press control Z to undo that. Normally this is set way down to just like a 10 or something. So when it's really small, you can see that all the dots are connecting. 
but if you make the spacing bigger, now if I start to paint there, now when I draw, you can see there's just a bunch of little dots. So on the stroke here, I'm gonna set this to a thousand so that there are a bunch of dots, but they're pretty far away from each other. And then on the jitter right here, if I turn the jitter all the way up to one, now the dots are randomly gonna be in different areas. So now I can just start to go along here and I can start to paint and you can see that there's randomly gonna be dots. So I don't have to hand paint them. I can just kind of go along here and it's just gonna add a bunch of different dots. Now I also want to click on this button right here and this is going to use the pen pressure for the radius. So if I press really lightly, you can see those dots are going to be very small, but then if I press down really hard with my pen, then those dots are going to be bigger. So now I can just kind of press a little bit lighter and then press a little bit deeper and that's going to make some dots a little bit bigger and some dots a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go along here and just kind of add a bunch of dots kind of randomly around, just adding some dots here and there on the mushroom. And I like to just kind of go back and forth and that jitter is really helpful as well because it's making the dots very random. So just keep going. I'm going to add some dots here. I'm also going to add some dots right down here on the side and I will add some dots, a few dots here and there kind of down here on the bottom and some dots back and forth there. So I'm just kind of going around painting some random dots. So it's very helpful that we can just set up the brush to do it for us and we don't actually have to manually paint all the dots. Of course, if you wanted to, you could manually add them all, but it's much easier and quicker just to do it this way. All right, so I'm going to go along here and add some smaller dots. So I'm just pressing with my pen much lighter and that's going to add smaller dots going along there. And of course, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to add too many, just some here and there and right down here on the bottom I'm just going to go along here and add some dots here and there not too many but just a few here and there and with that finished the texture painting for the top of the mushroom is done so something really important that you need to do is save out this image to an image file on your computer because if you close the blender file blender is not going to keep the image data and so you're going to have to retexture paint it so I'm just going to click and drag and bring out this window right here and this is the UV editing so this is the texture when it's flat. So I'm going to click right here on image and then I'm going to click on save as. And I'm just going to save this in the folder with my other tutorial files and I'm going to save this as mushroom top color and then I'm also going to click right here and I'm going to change it to a JPEG just so that the file size is a little bit smaller and then I will click on save as. All right, so I can now just hop right back over here to the layout. I can hold down the Z button and go into the material preview so that we can preview that material. And then I'm also going to press Alt H and Alt H is going to bring back the objects that we hid. Let's press Control S again to save. All right, so I now need to set up the material for the stem before we actually texture paint it. So I'm gonna click right up here on the shading tab and then right over here, I'm gonna click on new to add a new material. And I will rename this material and I'll just call this mushroom stem. All right, so I'm gonna press Shift A now. Let's go to the search here and I'm gonna search for an image texture and let's just drop the image texture down here and then I wanna take the color and we're gonna plug that up to the base color. And then just like the other object, we need to create a new image. So let's click on new here and I'm gonna have the resolution 4096 by 4096 so that it's a 4K texture. And then on the name here, I can just rename it to mushroom stem and I can just leave it black because I'm going to be going over it with a gradient. So I'm going to click on OK. All right, so we are now ready to do the texture painting. So let's click right over here on the texture painting workspace. And I'm going to make this much smaller. So I'm just going to drag this and make it really small so it's out of the way. And let's press Control S again to save. And then I'm going to press the T key. And that is going to bring up this side panel right here. And I'm going to go right back here to the fill tool. And then we already have everything set up right there. So I can just kind of drag a line up there and just kind of see how that's looking. And I want that gradient to be a bit bigger. So let's just drag it up a bit longer, maybe a little bit more, bring it up a little bit. Something like that is pretty good. All right, so I'm now gonna do pretty similar things that I did with this mushroom. So let's click right back over here on the draw brush. And then I'm going to hold down the S button and that's gonna to go to the eyedropper and I'm just going to select that right there. And then if I drag over the settings and go to the stroke here, you can see that we still have the spacing set up and the jitter, um, just like we did for these dots here. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this. So I'm just going to press the F key to make my brush smaller and then I'm just going to go along here and I'm going to give some random dots here and there just kind of on the top here of the stem. So I'm just going to go along and just paint and it's going to add random dots here and there on the stem. 
All right, maybe just a few more, but not too many. So something like that is pretty good. So now just like we did with this object, you can see there's like a little bit of noise here and there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, now change this back to the default settings. So I'm gonna go right over here, go to the stroke settings. And for the spacing, I'm gonna change this back to the default, which is 10. And then I'm gonna turn the jitter all the way down to zero. All right, and then I'm going to press the F key to make my brush bigger. I'm also gonna bring these settings back over here and on the radio, I want to turn this setting off and that way it's not going to use the pen pressure and then hold down the S button That's going to go to the eyedropper and I'm just going to select this dark blue Press F to make my brush bigger and then I'm going to go along here and actually I'll press Control Z to undo that I want to turn the strength down a little bit so that it's more subtle and then I'm just going to go along here and I'm just going to paint in that color and just make it a little bit darker here and there just kind of make it a bit more random so something like that and then i will hold down the s key and select this color but then right here if i go to this color i want to make this very very bright and then i'm just going to go along here and just kind of tap and i'm going to make this top part just a little bit brighter so something like that is pretty good and maybe just add a few more uh, lighter spots here and there so i'm just going around and adding a little bit more color and then if I go right down here to the bottom, I wanna make this bottom part really dark. So let's click on this color here and I'm gonna change this to like a dark blue and then let's make it really, really dark. So now I'm just gonna go along here, maybe turn the strength up a little bit so you can see it a bit better. And I'm just gonna go along here and just make it really, really dark down here. Press the F button to make my brush size bigger and just go along here and make that pretty dark and maybe bring that darkness up a little bit, just kind of make a little bit of noise and make it a bit random. So the texture painting for the mushroom stem is pretty easy. That's basically it. So we now need to save this image. So I'm just gonna drag out to see this over here to see the texture painting. And then let's click on image and I'm gonna click on save as. And I'm gonna save this as mushroom stem. And then right up here, I'm gonna save this as a JPEG file so that the file size is smaller. So let's click on save as image now. All right, so I can just hop right back over here to the layout press Control s to save and we now have a really nice mushroom so i am now finished with the texture painting so i'm going to move my display tablet aside and i'm going to go back to my main setup all right so now to finish up part one i'm going to be finishing the materials so to finish the materials let's go right up here to the shading tab and then i'm going to hold down the z button and go to the material preview just so that we can preview how this is looking so i want this mushroom to be pretty reflective so let's take the specular value and i'm going to turn that all the way up to one and then let's also take the roughness and i'm going to turn that down to like a 0.4 so it's a little bit more shiny and then i'm going to click right back over here on this object and do the same thing so the spec I'm going to turn that all the way up to 1 and the roughness value to just like a 0.4 and then I also want to add a little bit of procedural bump on this material so to do this I'm going to press shift a let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a musgrave texture and let's drop the musgrave down here and then I am going to be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can just click right here on edit and then open up the preferences and then right over here on the add-ons tab you can go to the search here and you can start to type in node and then just check mark the node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use it in the video so you can just close the user preferences all right so now that we have the node wrangler add-on turned on i'm going to select the musgrave texture and then i'm going to press Control t and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes now i don't need the mapping nodes so i'm going to select it and then i will press the x key to delete it and then i want to use the object coordinate so i'm going to take the object and i'm going to put that into the vector of the musgrave texture and then i can Control shift and select the musgrave texture to preview it so the object coordinates is going to place the musgrave texture on the object more evenly and then on the scale here i want to change this down to like a two now i want another texture to distort the musgrave texture so i'm going to press shift a let's go to the search here and i'm going to search for a noise texture and let's drop the noise texture right down here between the texture coordinate and the musgrave and so this noise texture is going to distort the musgrave and then on the scale here i just want to change this to like a one because i don't want it to be very big and then let's also take the detail and i'm going to turn that all the way up to the max which is 15 so it has more detail i do think i want the scale to be a little bit bigger 
bigger though. So let's take the scale and I'm going to turn that up to like a two. So I now want to plug this texture into the normal to give it some bump. So I'm going to take the height value and we're going to put that into the normal, but then we need to convert this to normal data. So let's press shift A. I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for the bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here between the Musgrave and the principal. And then we actually don't want the height to be going into the normal. We want the height to be going into the height value of the bump. And that way it'll convert this black and white data into actual normal data. So if I control shift and select the bump, you can see that's what it's looking like. And then I can control shift and select the principal BSDF and we can preview the final material. Now that is way too bumpy. It's very, very bumpy. So on the strength value right here, I'm going to change this to a 0 0.05, just change it to like a 0 0.05. So it's much less bumpy. But now if you zoom in there, you can see there's just a little bit of bump. So I now want these four nodes to also be on this material right here. So let's click back on the mushroom top. I'm going to press the A key to deselect everything. And then I can press B for the box select. And I'm just going to drag a box around these nodes and then just hold down the shift key and make sure you select one of the nodes last just to make sure there is one active node selected. So I'm now going to press control C and control C is going to copy all the nodes. And then I can click on the stem and I'm going to press control V and that is going to paste the nodes. And then I can just plug the normal into the normal right there on the principal. And now you can see it has that little bit of bump. All right, so the materials are finished. So I'm going to go right back over here to the layout, hold down the Z button and make sure you are in the material preview. And I'm going to press one on the numpad to go to the front view. Now I just want to create one more of these and duplicate it and just kind of move it down here. So I'm going to select the mushroom and then shift select the other piece of the mushroom. And I'm going to press shift D. So shift D is going to duplicate it. Let's press S to scale and then R to rotate and I'll hit Z to rotate it over on the Z axis and just give it a random rotation. And I'm just going to stick it right down here. You could also select this and then shift select this object and press R to rotate and just kind of rotate that over. And then I'm going to select this piece right here. And then I'm going to go to the side and press R to rotate and just kind of rotate that up a little bit. And then also select this one and press R to rotate and just kind of rotate it over a little bit. And I could also just shift and select both of these and kind of scale them down a little bit, just make them a bit smaller. So something like that. All right, so I'm going to press Control S again to save, and this is going to wrap it up for part one of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far, and thank you so much for watching. And in part two, we're going to be doing a bunch more scene creations. So we'll be doing the lighting and making the ground and putting things on the ground and doing the background and all of that. So I'm going to be releasing one part each day of the tutorial series. So when part two is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and also the link will be in the video description to the next part. I'll also have a link in the description to the tutorial series playlist. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, you can also purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, and that is a great way to help support me and this channel. But I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in part two.